it's a pleasure, my brother. It's quite disappointing. Um, the Black Stars let uh, go a two-goal lead yesterday, uh, once again at the AFCON. But from your technical point of view, what really went wrong on the day for us? Okay, um, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to share my views on what um, happened yesterday. Look, in the game of football, there are certain basic rudiments that you need to abide by. If in the game at that level, and technically, your players are not that comfortable in every department in just constructing three or four passes among themselves and establishing a rhythm that could last or a tempo that could last close to uh, five minutes or three, four, five minutes, at times ten minutes, mm -hmm. then you, are, you find yourself in big issue. Now, if it is proven that defensively you are bad, you happen to take a lead, you don't withdraw into your bad state, or you don't withdraw into the state that could lead you to you being uh, uh, easily exposed. This Chris Hilton team have shown since the World Cup, when Otuado was in charge, together with this current technical team who happens to be in charge now, that yeah. defensively, we are a very bad team. So one would have thought that if we are playing against Mozambique, not a powerful house in Africa. But this tournament too has taught us otherwise. And we take a 2-0 lead. You don't effect changes that should mean that we should be defending against Mozambique. The quality in gap is not vast. We're not playing against Argentina. We're not playing against the French national team. We're playing against Mozambique. So tactically, I completely disagree with the coach when he saw the need to substitute our best attacking player in the suspension. In that first half, there was absolutely nothing to be happy about, apart from the disuspensive moment. The moment I, I call the disuspensive moment. Yeah. He was finding it very difficult against the left back of Mozambique. Very smart on the part of the young man. He switched position to the left. And the right full back, who had gotten used to the antics and the tricks of Jordan Ayu, thought Joseph Penso was Jordan Ayu. So by the time he realized the footwork and the speed, the acceleration was completely off guard. We got a penalty. Beautifully slotted in by Jordan Ayu. Now it came down to the in-game coaching. Look, that's mm -hmm. what coaching is all about. Apart from preparing your team on the training grounds, so when you are in the game itself and the game starts, the in-game coaching is what the profession is all about. About 90% of that profession is based on what happens when the, when, when the game itself is in progress. Now, for that in-game coaching, that is where our intestine cutting has failed. We failed from the very beginning. We decided that, look, we were taking Richard Ofori to the uh, a tournament as our number one goalkeeper. He's not been in goal. We didn't take him to the World Cup. Prior to the World Cup, he was sitting on the bench at Orlando Paris as their third goalkeeper. After the World Cup, he's kept that position at Orlando Paris. So for close to two years, he's not been active. As to why Richard O'Reilly Kingston, with all his experience, one of the best goalkeepers I have seen for Ghana, could ask, as a goalkeeper's trainer, could agree with the technical team that Richard O'Foley should be chosen ahead of Lawrence Atizigi for this tournament. Only they can explain. And I believe that that was very, very bad on the part of the technical team. Look, the young man was very suspect. The entire, the entire competition, the entire tournament, in all the three games we played, he's been very suspect. Even yesterday, look at the errors he was, he was committing. Prior to that error, he had committed three errors already. So again, what is the psyche of this team? Now, when we are in the lead, and you are a coach and you want to do your substitution, you don't ask a player who has played 31 minutes in six months to go and replace or to go and play for 45 minutes. What, are, what do you think you are doing? Please say that again. Ah, it's, 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 coach, kindly continue, yeah. Yes. So like I'm saying, you don't put a player who has played 31 minutes of football in six months to go and play 45 minutes. Whilst there is an Eshnirma, there's Osman Bukai, there's Naki Williams. Everybody, look. If you are not knowledgeable about the thing, can't you see what was happening? Couldn't the coaching staff see 
They've got the video analyst that just got him on, on, on screen. Clearly sits in front of the video. He's the one analyzing the video. Whatever is happening, what was the tactical message from that software that told them that the should be introduced into this game? For what? And then when you look at the fact that we had a back four that looked very comfortable, all of a sudden he switched to the back five that brought in players that could not handle the ball, players that would only be ballooning the ball. In the game of football, if you keep ballooning the ball, you keep inviting your opponents onto you. And that simply means that you'll be under pressure. And like I said, your DNA is very bad when it comes to defending. So why do you position yourself to be in a situation that will, that will mean that you are likely to be exposed? 